the Soviet Union shoots down a NASA research aircraft. This was not electronic spying. This was not photographic experimentation. This was science. For decades, conspiracy theorists accused NASA of covering for secret military operations. The problem with the cover story is that it's baloney, and the Russians know it. Now, declassified documents prove that NASA was framed. It's very unlikely that NASA is being told exactly what's going on. Even people within the U.S. government don't know about these missions. May 3rd, 1960. NASA announces to the world that a research aircraft conducting high-altitude weather experiments over Turkey has disappeared. The pilot is presumed dead. Atmospheric and weather sampling are a key part of NASA's mission, but there's something unusual about this operation. Why is NASA conducting high-altitude research in Turkey? What's going on? NASA maintains that its aircraft accidentally drifted off course. Unfortunately, a weather observation plane has flown over the Soviet Union, blown off course by bad winds and stuff, and we've lost the plane and the pilot. And isn't that a shame? The Russians claim the aircraft is a spy plane. The leader of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, appears before the Soviet parliament and says, that the USSR has shot down an American spy plane that trespassed into Soviet territory. NASA releases a photo of the craft with their logo on the tail. NASA, of course, is outraged. This is innocent scientific research. There was a malfunction. The plane flew on autopilot. If it strayed into anybody else's airspace, it was an accident and nothing more. But the Soviets have an ace up their sleeve. The Russians wait until the US is fully committed to the cover story before they release that they have information that the story is false. They have the pilot. He's alive. He's confessed to being a spy. They have the plane. They have the wreckage. And they have his equipment. The problem with the cover story is that it's baloney, and the Russians know it. The NASA research mission is actually one of the most disastrous spy missions in U.S. history. On the 1st of May, 1960, a U.S. spy plane labeled Article 360 takes off on a top secret mission, codenamed Operation Grand Slam. The plane is a Lockheed U-2C. The pilot's name is Gary Powers. The U-2 is a remarkable aircraft, capable of flying at fantastic heights and taking incredible high-resolution pictures that will enable the Americans to determine the true level of Soviet military capabilities. Gary Powers is one of a handful of highly trained elite pilots at the cutting edge of this entire program. The U-2 operates at an altitude of 70,000 feet, far higher than any Soviet fighter plane can reach at that time. They thought at the time that the U-2 was not vulnerable to attack because it flew at such high altitude, it could not be shot down. As it turns out, that's a dangerous and false assumption. The Soviets know that the Americans are overflying their territory at high altitudes, and they've developed systems to counter it. For the past three years, the Soviet military has been rolling out the new S-75 Davina surface-to-air missile. The Davina can reach higher than any previous Soviet anti-aircraft weapon. As Gary Powers approaches his first target, there's an impact. There's an explosion. The aircraft has been hit. Gary Powers managed to eject successfully from the aircraft and parachuted to the ground, where he was subsequently arrested by the Soviet authorities. Now, the Russians have the wreckage of a top-secret U.S. spy plane, and the pilot who flew it. For a pilot who's been captured, 
and behind enemy lines and under interrogation. This would be a very, very stressful moment because you're thinking about all kinds of things, what you can say, what you can't say, and it's a great deal of stress and, of course, intimidation as well. For the Soviets, this is a win-win situation. They parade powers in a show trial to expose America's lies to the world. The Russians are saying that the pilot gave them a confession, but even without a confession, they have the airplane and the equipment. It's pretty clear what he was doing up there. The Soviets have been doing this sort of thing successfully for decades. They know how to play this. I think the Soviets were far more concerned about using this as a propaganda issue than any kind of information they were going to glean from him. To the watching world, it looks like NASA is complicit in a military intelligence program to spy on the Soviet Union. This is something of a black eye to NASA, which had prided itself on being a civilian aeronautical and space program. And now their name has been used to cover for an obvious spy program. For decades, conspiracy theorists use the incident as evidence that NASA operations are a front for secret military projects. The role of NASA with regard to military activities is a gray area about which we know very little. They do plenty of classified work because the technology of many things is classified. But recently declassified documents reveal that at the time of the operation, NASA knew nothing about the mission. It's very unlikely that NASA's being told exactly what's going on. Even people within the US government don't know about these missions. They're one of the most secret programs the Americans have at this moment. NASA is ordered by the Eisenhower administration to release the cover story that one of their aircraft has gone off course and crashed during a research mission. They were coerced into doing that, and they weren't really very happy about it. Available records make it clear NASA was not involved in Operation Grand Slam, but parts of the story are still shrouded in mystery. Although some official files on this incident have been released, some of the NSA files remain under lock and key to this day. So there may be parts of the story that we'll never know.